founder stars Michael Keaton, Laura Dern, uh, Patrick, Patrick Wilson, Wilson. Yeah. and uh, the girl that was uh, from played Velma off Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo, um, I forgot her name. Uh, shit, I forgot. Uh, Linda Farinelli or whatever you pronounce it. I'm yeah. sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. Yeah. Anyway, it's a story about the founder of McDonald's, Ray Kroc, who started out as a kind of a mixer. He was a guy going around pretty much doing real kind of similar to like how they do in real estate, going from place to place trying to set up franchises. And he starts uh, Ray Kroc. He's like a small salesman trying to get to you know live money yeah. and all that. He, uh, he starts out as a guy trying to sell ice cream machines and shake machines. Yeah. And little and the, little he gets a call from the McDonald's people who started kind of like their own little shack business back in the forties, fifties. Yeah. Era. It was like fifty four. Yeah, it was like greasers well, and stuff. Well, they so well they started originally like in the forties, I think. Yeah. Probably. But anyway, yeah, they go to him. They go. He goes to them and he offers a deal where he wants to because he notices that with McDonald's they they had a different idea where with unlike other restaurants at the time they were able to get food fast quite quicker yeah. and he sees that idea and he wants to make a franchise out of it and so much like in real life uh, Ray Krog set up all these different organizations around McDonald's and was uh, cooperating with the McDonald's brothers to try to get a franchise going yeah. and I've been actually looking for this movie for a while because yeah. Uh, I remember seeing the trailers of it, at least probably at the end of December, and from what I heard, now this is probably going to be weird because from what I heard, this film is either is a 2017 re release film, but it still technically came out in 2016 and one theater. I didn't even see so, the trailer until 2017. So. Yeah, so this is going to be one of those rare occasions where I'm still putting this as a 2016 movie because mm -hmm. it still came out in one theater last December. So. Well, it is. I actually officially looked at it as a 2016 film. Okay. So, and, and the, the story itself, like, the, the whole story behind McDonald's actually got me curious because yeah. I always wondered what the history of that was like. Yeah, well, I, I was interested in that story, but I, I also, obviously, for obvious reasons, Michael Keaton is obviously going to have me trapped in any film yeah. he does. I love Michael Keaton. I've, yeah. I've loved a lot of his films, especially his early stuff with yeah. Batman, Beetlejuice, and even some of his later stuff. Like, yeah. I'm one of the only few that... Probably, well, I'm one of the many that liked uh, other guys in yeah. him in that movie. Oh, man, other guys, he had me fucking laughing. Yeah. In fact, I wanna, I was kind of pissed off that we didn't see more of him in that yeah. movie. And yeah. so it shows that even to this day, Michael Keaton's one of those actors that can still make good movies uh, uh, enjoyable. And I don't you know, know if y'all... Yeah, this movie kind of got mixed reviews, but I enjoyed it. Especially his performance was Need for Speed. He was yeah, I've nice. seen parts with him in. He looked like he was having a blast. Yeah, he was yeah. like DJ Beetlejuice. Yeah, you know? he was having fun. But anyway, this one, it shows that as the movie goes along, Ray Kroc is trying to set up the business with the McDonald Brothers. And at first, they're on board with him. You know, They want to try to see what he goes with it. But then, not going to spoil anything, but as the film goes along, you start to see a lot of the stuff involved with what Ray Kroc did in real life that in that becomes part of a problem for the McDonald's brothers. Yeah. So, more, let's just say, not spoil anything, but you start getting a lot of corruption, or should I say, social network kind of thing. Yeah. It's like basically the same thing yeah. that pretty much Mark Zuckerberg did with Facebook in the in real life. Basically. You see in every pretty much every biography film I see, you see the same the same thing. I'm not, and, and it still works for each film of its own. But you see the thing where you get the owner, the, the guy with the idea. Then you get the guy who comes in and wants to help the guy with the idea, and then the guy with the idea takes off the idea, and the guy who created it fucking gets fucked in the end. Yeah. <laughs> And so this is one of those yeah. kind of films, much like The Social yeah. Network, which I haven't really watched, but I've seen parts of. It, it has that similar structure where the guy is rising to fame with putting these businesses together, and he's actually making quite the 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 money doing it too. And if, and he's also trying to build an empire. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see a lot of the different ways that this this business comes together because. My biggest pros of this film is the way it's structured with how uh, these the way that he puts together these these ideas are come in handy with how McDonald's will later adapt with franchises. Well, you start also learn that the, the guys who created McDonald's, McDonald's was their last name, uh, they were looking forward to like a small family business zone. They didn't really want to expand. Right. They apparently tried once and a lot of shit happened and they didn't want to relive that again, you know, so... They were worried, but they trusted him, and he takes off with the idea, and yeah, and starts to build his own. As we know, it's the 
richest, one of the richest uh, franchises in history. Yeah, and yeah. what's funny is just earlier I was just eating McDonald's, so yeah, and as a tie-in with the movie, tie I was actually movie, doing yeah. the promotion for it. Yeah. So, but anyway, yeah, my pros with this one also, I love Michael Mc my. Michael Keaton in this film. Like to yeah. me, this is probably. I would say this is probably his best performance that I've seen in years, like as far yeah. as like a more straightforward role. But what, what, it, it made me feel like he was like like a Beetlejuice taking over McDonald's. You yeah, know? He's like he's his, so animated. Yeah, um, I love Michael Keaton in this as well. His performance was amazing. I can't ever down the dude, uh, but he has so much energy in this film, which makes it, brightens it up and it gets you invested in this buyer. Yeah, because. Yeah. As the character alone, the, the way that this character is able to come up with these different ideas and present all this in such a uh, like a more energetic way, you really get the feel of how Ray Kroc was like because, mm -hmm. and we also see footage of Ray Kroc toward the end of, what, and that's how he was. Like he, yeah. Keaton actually brought in the mannerisms and everything that pretty much Kroc did uh, in the physicality role. Yeah. And uh, other performances, you got the dude from Volcano, I forgot his uh, name. John Carroll Lynch. Yeah, I loved him. I, yeah, I, I, dude's pretty I, cool. I like the two. I enjoy uh, him. I, I mean, like the two McDonald brothers, yeah. especially Nick uh, Hofferman, I believe that's how you announced his name, mm -hmm. and, and John Carroll Lynch, the main two, because you can see all the stuff that they're trying to do to keep their business going yeah. for themselves because they're getting into a rivalry with Ray Kroc because they realize that even though he's trying to, like, he signed a contract with them, He's still. They're still trying he to. Found sure. yeah, he, he found loopholes. Yeah, he found loopholes to try to look, to try to overdo it. And you kind of feel the emotions because you feel for the McDonald's brothers because, I mean, they they created the idea. They were really that. All right, that one brother, the real big brother. Or I John can, Lynch. Yeah, he, I can understand maybe not uh, Croc not liking him, but that other dude was really likable. Yeah, uh, Nick Offerman, the 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 one with the. The taller Fargo. guy from Fargo. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the older brother. Yeah, yeah. I actually felt bad for them because uh, you get the emotions that you know that they create this idea, and in the end, they got fucked. Yeah, they got fucked royally. But still, you know, there it's got emotions. But this movie is based off of fu uh, energy. It is. It's Inter the same fun. equivalent that I feel like with movies like Wolf of Wall Street, where even though it is like very business structured, yeah. you still have the, the way that the story did it, it. I still got into what was happening. And it's a shame you know, that the, this movie is getting very limited, like. Attention. Pub publicity. Yeah, because yeah. the film, well, not just that, because I understand the film came out with, the other films that came out, like Split and Triple X also came out this weekend, so yeah. I can understand that it might not get the attention it deserves as it should, yeah. but I think that if this film would have came out earlier, this probably could have been a contender for an Oscar. I'm going to go with an 8.5 out of 10. Fair enough. What did you guys think of The Founder? Comment below, and if you like what you see here, you can check out more of our reviews here, and we'll see you in our next one. We'll see you later. Later.